everyone, and welcome to The Little Blue Fly. Before we get started, I would first like to start by saying welcome to my channel. And if you have not already subscribed, I do invite you to join us all on the adventures here at The Little Blue Fly. And if you have enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated and it helps us to get right out there in that wonderful algorithm. Okay, so we are going to be talking about my mood wall and actually working on it today along with some other um, things as well. As you can see here, this photo was taken when we first moved in in 2020. We decided to open up the living room by removing this bookcase. And when we did, and on the other side, the false wall, we found an amazing treasure. And I will be sharing that with you all as well. For those of you that are new, for the ones that have been here, you already know what we found. Okay, we also will be talking about some designer curtains and paint colors for the wall, the other walls, as well as my vintage blue and whites. So that being said, let's begin, shall we? Okay, so here I have started already with, um, it's a product called, and I will be, sh I have shared this before, but you will also see it again in this video. It's a product that I use called Citrus Strip. It's orange, it's like a gel. Um, and then I have this new fabulous tool here um, that I purchased as well. I don't remember if it was Home Depot or Lowe's, but one of them. But this tool right here has saved me so much time in this process. Um, I have some citrus, stri citrus strip applied and now I want to demonstrate how it just removes paint and just old stain and varnish. It's an amazing tool. But anyhow, this is my second go through. The first one, I removed the majority of the paint. And this one is just removing the leftovers along with the stain and the varnish. Now the trim going around the door, if only it was as easy as this flat surface, because I'm not going to be repainting, I will be staining. So it's very important that I get off the majority of the paint or it will show through on the stain and that's no good. So I had to go through this three times, three different processes to get it all removed. And then the corner piece is fabulous when doing the window panes. I'm going to take you in a little bit closer. You know, it just really gets in the groove of everything right there. This took a little bit of time because when you work with the citrus strip, um, it does make the wood wet. And we have to remember this wood is what, 83 years old. So I really had to take my time and be very careful when removing all of this because it's easy to take a big chunk of wood out and and we don't want that and again this is the second go through And again, here's another little groove and a way to use the tool. And it just comes off like butter after applying this product. 
It's just, again, the time consuming part is really taking your time to remove it all. Wonderful tool. Okay, so the inside of the door, I have um, went, well, two passes have taken place. And just look at all that mess down at the floor. And you have to be really careful when working with this to protect your floor because the product will remove the varnish right off of your wood floor. It's a messy job, but it's going to be a very rewarding job. I have the, the okay, <laughs> I guess I, I sort of gave it away a little bit here. So back behind the paper, we have an original window. So the door, again, two passes have been made. As you can see, all the paint is still around the window and then this whole wall will be painted soon <laughs> let's say that soon here's the citrus strip this can be purchased at lowe's or home depot i highly suggest that you have your windows open um, it does have you know a citrusy scent to it but still um i open everything up I have the shelves over to the left. Um, they have been stripped a couple of times. And again, wherever the paint was, I had to go through it three different times. So I will be removing the paper here shortly um, for those of you that are new and you will see the natural wood tone. Here on the inside, you can see how the product, this has probably been sitting, um, I would say for a good hour. And we're getting a good um, bubble up. And when you see this, it's, it's time. It's time to start removing some of the paint. The first pass is just super messy because you're removing all of the layers of paint. Looking in closer, you can see how it's picking up the, the varnish, the stain, the top coat. Look at that. It's, it's ready. Again, when it's flat and smooth, it's so enjoyable. And here we have it. What a difference already, right? We have no stain going on. It has both the door and the window has been completely stripped. Well, going around the window because I love the stain color um, of the original. Again, this is an 83 year old window mint. Well, almost other than the drill hole down um, on the bottom right hand side, but the stain color, fabulous. So I went to um, a paint store, Benjamin Moore, to our ladies, and they helped us match the stain. So I decided to, I have this old t-shirt cloth and which I did change um, the method of applying the stain. The t-shirt just, it just took too long. Um, it seemed to work out better when I applied the varnish, uh, the stain with the brush. But before I stain, I'm going to add this pre-stain conditioner onto the wood because whenever, um, sometimes when you go to put a stain down on a wood surface, it doesn't 
uh, adhere like like it should. It will um, like I don't know how to describe it. Almost like a like a it's not like a bubbling in a way. You know, it just doesn't um, it just doesn't take to the wood like it should. So you don't get an even stain. Um, on to your surface. So this pre-stain, it just eliminates all that. It gives you the perfect um, coverage right away. So after applying this, I let it dry for about 20 minutes and then I uh, go ahead and add the stain color. Okay, so as you can see, the one part has the stain and the window to the right does not. This is a small little panel piece from the window that um, I am trying to match the other product with. So on the back, let's get to the correct side. There was three different stains we worked with. And here they are. As you can see, the one to the far left, that's just a bit too dark. The one to the right is almost, you know, like the perfect color. But the bad thing is with that one, you have to be really careful. You don't have much room um, for mistakes right here. So I decided to go with the one in the middle because I can always apply more if that makes sense. And I just feel it's a real, it's going to be a really good matchup after I place on a couple of coats. I just love my sunroom. <laughs> For those of you who ha might not have watched it already, I highly suggest that you go watch my decorating marathon here in the sunroom. Okay, so the wood stain I chose is called a black cherry. And again, I changed the method of using the old t-shirt to a brush but what a beautiful color look at that and this is just the first application i did add two all the way through i'm not worried about the wall it getting on the wall because that is getting painted however i will clean it up some So I'm just making sure to get a good application and then whatever is left over, um, I just go through and wipe that off. You're seeing a little bit of the caulking, um, the old caulking between the wood pieces, and that's fine. The stain will cover that right up. So this is just a very, um, this has proven to be a very time consuming um, project. It's so funny. Whenever I start something, I'm like, oh, I can get through this. No problem. This is going to be a breeze, right? No, wrong. Uh, it, it, it's always more. Always more than I bargained for, but that's okay. The outcome is going to be absolutely delicious. Okay, so the outside of the door has been stained. I still have, um, and as you can see, it's very close to the window. And I haven't even put any of... Um, the gloss on yet. 
So next I'm going to go ahead and, you know, clean a little bit off the walls and then work on the door and the outside of the window. We'll see how far I get. Okay, here we go. So the door is completely finished and now we, well, I still have to put uh, the, the shine to the door. I have to add the candy to it. But I also added some of the stain up above the window. You know, if only I could just devote all my time to this from the moment I wake up until I go to sleep but let's get that right I'm a mom and there's cooking to do and cleaning to do so it's a process okay we're going to move on over to my designer curtains here they are by sherry klein um i have linked them um before in previous videos and they're just a fabulous french country curtain and actually uh, there i go actually um we have some sun today how about that and so out here in the sunroom, we're getting more of the true color. Now, what I'm trying to do is match, okay, pashmina, love pashmina, but I've been looking at already putting that in my dining room area. And here it is um, next to the curtains. Now, I don't want the curtains to drown out on the wall so I'm like okay do I go a soft green something very gentle um, so I'm just a little bit torn here do I go a gentle green because we have to remember the mood wall is going to be dark and when we are in the living room and looking out to the sunroom the yellow is going to demand attention through the window and the door so there's other colors here I have picked out as well. I'm holding the phone, so I'm trying to work this. I know there's another, I'm looking for this other green is what I'm doing. Okay, there it is here on the wall. This is called Thicket by Benjamin Moore, but if you see, there's the sample to the right. So on that wall, it's receiving quite a bit of light on it. My walls will not in my living room because I don't get um, through the day. I mean, in the early evening, I have some sunlight coming through. So I believe that green is going to be out. But then I have this yellow, but I don't want to go yellow because I have the yellow sunroom. But I do love the yellow, so I think it would be a nice transition. We'll, we'll see, because looking here in the living room, you can see the yellow, right? So I really, I think it would just be wrong putting yellow on the walls out here. So any suggestions um, to help me with, okay, what color to go over here on the side wall, it would just be so appreciated. But there is this one I am eyeballing because this is a light gray. This is a Revere Pewter. I need warmth. I need to darken things up. So let's go ahead and just ignore that paint for a little bit and have fun decorating in some of my vintage blue and whites. So this is a little misfit teacup and saucer that I purchased. And I always state, let's not look over the misfits because we can 
make them look darling in our direction and our decorating all day long. And I'm, I'm going to show you how right now. Okay, I have this um, orchid mix because I do not have good drainage working in a teacup. I am just going to place a little bit down at the bottom. We have lava rocks in it and some wood pieces. And it just gives some relief to the root system at the bottom of our plants. They won't just drown out in water. Going to add just a little bit of soil. It's so nice having some sun today. And it's not quite warm enough yet, right? For us gardeners to go out there and um, start planting all of our pretties or even trying to tend to the ones, our perennials that are out there. So this was enjoyable, um, putting, being able to put this together today. So this is some of my Swedish ivy, which um, I am for sure going to start uh, selling this. I just have to get everything together to be able to do that. Um, I will be selling pieces of my Swedish ivy. Here's some that I have um, propagating in just one of my clear little glasses in the kitchen. But I did share some nice ones in my decorating marathon in my sunroom. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I have these propagators now. So I just placed one off to the side, which covers over the broken handle. Place some moss up at top with a sweet little daffodil. Daffodils are so kind, so welcoming. And this is how one way to decorate a misfit teacup. So I tried to make sure to let some of the earth, some of the soil, um, show through the moss because I like how the two mingle with each other. It just gives it another layer, right? A little bit more depth. Here's another vintage find, another blue and white. And I'm just going to do the same process. Put in some of the orchid mix to help with the drainage. And this one, I decided to add in a sweet pansy. It has the most gorgeous, as soon as it opens up, I'll make sure to take a picture and share it with you all. For those of you that have not started following me yet, I do have Little Blue Fly, uh, the, the Little Blue Fly on Facebook and Instagram as well. And um, I will be placing uh, pictures on those platforms. But the pansy, it's a beautiful um, cobalt, like a cobalt blue with the rich, you know, the rich uh, purples in it as well. Just going to tuck in a, a sweet little daffodil here on the side. Daffodils surely can help put a smile on our faces 
you know, during this transition where we're all just starving for the sun at this time, right? And just to have a little bit of warmth on our bodies. And a daffodil is just sort of there to smile and remind us that it's coming. It's coming. Just have a little bit more patience. So a daffodil is just a welcoming friend during this time of the season. So I'm doing my best to try to be a clean decorator over here and not get soil absolutely everywhere. Now I will be adding in a little bit of moss. This can be purchased um, from Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Almost any different craft store. And sometimes home goods will get very large bags of this in. And when you see those, grab them because they're like $14.99 but there's quite a bit of moss inside those bags. So I'm just going around and, you know, just placing in little pieces here and there, uh, making sure to let some of the soil peek through. I so enjoy putting um, plants in just unusual vintage pieces. Now this piece is, I have shared this one before. Um, this is a vintage um, Bombay vessel. Absolutely love this. Um, the previous owner, obviously, so I put this tray in here, but they put florals in here as well because there's actually um there I go with that word <laughs> um there's a like a sticky piece here from the foam but I'm just going to place this tray in here just because I don't want to scratch anything up just to give it a little bit of protection when I add in the stones and bark down at the bottom. The soil, that, I'm not worried about that. We'll be fine with that. I just wanted to protect from the, these stones. I decided to put a terracotta pot upside down because this vessel is larger, so I thought, let's bring it up. Let's do a little bit of vertical decorating. I will be sharing that in a moment. This one was fun. The larger the vessel, Oh, we could just creativity everywhere. Endless, endless. Just sprinkling about. A little bit of soil. Not too much because I still have to place, as you can see, we have some gorgeous fragrant, fragrant bulbs right here. I'm sure many of you are familiar with them. Perfect. When you mix the the purples with the blues it's always going to be um, a beautiful affair for sure just going to go ahead and take this out I'm just trying not to get um, soil everywhere now these are just babies they're going to get quite tall about 10, 12 inches. And I'm just going to place three of them inside this vessel. And 
These were purchased from Lowe's. They have quite a few of them right now. You can buy the ones here in the larger pot or um, I think they have single ones as well. The fragrance is fabulous. It really helps when you have that hint of dust going on in your home. And I have quite a bit of that going on right now with all these projects. So I welcome this scent. <laughs> I'm placing in a little, uh, just a few daffodils for the smile. I was happy to see in our, in the front of the cottage, we planted um, a Japanese maple a couple years back. And we also put in some of these daffodils. And so we were very happy to see just quite a bit of them um, start popping up from the earth. Trying to be careful with them. Now again, we will be having more daffodils um, popping up. Um, the other floral will be, the other bulb will, what, grow again, 10 to 12 inches. And I'm just stating that again because of the item I'm getting ready to place on top of this terracotta pot. I'm just going to tuck it in for right now, but as everything starts to grow up beautifully. See here I have two terracotta pots on top of each other. So when everything starts growing up, then the, the teapot won't hide as much. I'm making sure some of the blue from the inside of the bowl is showing. I'm going to add in just one um, piece here of my Swedish Ivy just to let it gently cascade down off the front and add a different color and texture. But you will see that um, I did remove one of the pots. I just wanted to share with you how um, it will eventually rise up as everything starts to grow. I mean, isn't this fun to just put different um, bulbs and flowers inside of old vessels? It's so different, so beautiful and calming. And no, that just needs to go over to the other side, Bev. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now I thought I was, I pulled it away because I thought I was going to be placing in these daffodils, right? Which you see them here, but I did change my mind. I removed them um, and added in some pansies, which you will see here in a moment.
Daffodils would have been precious as well, but I was just looking for a different texture. So here's a nice close up of the soil with the moss and the Swedish ivy. And here is another. Now these two I actually took in the evening when the sun was setting on them. Okay, so here we go. Took a pot out. Because I want my teapot to sort of, uh, I want it to look like, um, like a little, like a little fairy tale garden. I mean, imagine walking through a garden of all these beautiful spring bulbs and just have different um, copper teapots just tucked in here and there throughout the garden. How magical is that? <laughs> That's where this took me when I was making it. So inside of the teapot, you can see I placed in the pansies and it will lift up as the bulbs start to grow. And when this opens up, I will make sure to take a wonderful photo for you all and share them. So go pull out those vessels if they might be packed away, your vintage teacups or bowls and, and start having fun with them with some uh, spring flowers. And you can even use faux flowers if you wish to. Now, if you did enjoy this video, again, please give it a like. And if you have not already subscribed, please think about doing so. And I hope to see you in the next video for the, some more mood wall. <laughs>